Hello, my name is Colin. I lead the Orange Tribe here, and welcome back to another episode of Wellspring Students. I think it's like episode 170 at this point. I don't know. It feels like a long time, though. And I was thinking about just some crazy things that I don't understand that I wish I understood, like bananas. Like, why are they shaped like that? Why are they called bananas? B a n a n a n a n a. I don't know. Why do people call them that? Or what about heights? Why do we all grow to different heights? Who thought of that? It doesn't really even make sense. It seems like such a random thing. I mean, we're used to it, but when you start thinking about it, it doesn't make sense. Or what about country music? Like, I'm not trying to hate. I'm just saying, no, I don't think your tractor's sexy. And quite frankly, I'm a little uncomfortable you even asked. Or maybe even the Bible. The Bible's confusing. It's just so many words. Like, why was God not just satisfied with Adam and Eve ate some fruit, brought sin into the world. Ever since then, he's been on a rescue mission for us. He did that and wanted to love us, and he did it through Jesus. And he sent Jesus down here. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins, came back to life, went up to heaven so we could receive new life, and then tell that story to the whole world. But instead, we get stories about some guy with a bushy beard waving around a staff, splitting red seas, some local homeboy from a small town with a slingshot taking down some guy named Goliath. It's like, why are all these stories here? It doesn't really even make sense. And to top it all off, I think we've all heard people talk about oh, the Bible. Oh, it's so life changing. Or when I read my Bible in the morning, nothing makes me feel better than reading my Bible in the morning. I'll be honest with you guys. I speak here. There's times I read the Bible and I'm like, well, I read the words. I don't know what's next. I don't feel anything. I don't even know that I learned anything. It was just like, well, that's cool. I, I read it today. I think a lot of times we feel like that. And I think a lot of times we're in search for this mystery magic that people claims that the Bible has. And I don't know why we say it's there. And honestly, if you went out in the public, found 10 people, random people, and asked them what the point of the Bible was, chances are you would get 10 different answers and so we have a lot of questions that leaves us having a lot of questions and look questions are a great thing you're not a lesser christian because you have questions you're not a lesser person because the bible doesn't make sense to you you don't have to understand it to be more loved by god or to be a greater person it doesn't work like that so it's okay to have those questions it's a great thing to have those questions and honestly i think every single person has so so many questions so we're in this new series called Explained, and really what we're going to be trying to do is answer those questions for you. Over the next few weeks, we're going to really break down what's the point of the Bible, how can you use the Bible to love people better and to live the life that God has called us to live. That's what we're going to be talking about, so we're going to be digging through, and I'm going to go ahead and say now, we're not going to answer all the questions you have because that's literally an impossible task. There's always going to be more questions, but hopefully we can give you on a starting path to get there. So let's start real simple. There's two huge sections in the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. The Old Testament is the pre-Jesus section, everything that happened before Jesus. And then the New Testament is the Jesus and early church section. And a lot of people talk about the Bible like it's a combination of books, but that isn't entirely accurate. It's really history, eyewitness accounts, letters, journals, songs, and other types of documents. And these all make up the Bible and these accounts that are in it. So today we're actually going to be looking at one of the four Gospels, which are simply the story of Jesus, their eyewitness accounts. And we're going to be in the book of John, which is in which section of the Bible? New Testament, exactly. I'm sure you got that one. But in the book of John was written by a man named John, who not only got to see Jesus, but was actually close friends with Jesus. He was one of Jesus' disciples. And after Jesus went back into heaven, John would have probably spent most of his life going around places in the world, spreading the story of Jesus from the time he had spent with him. And so later on in John's life, towards the end of it, he decided, hey, I'm going to write this down. And kind of a fun fact about John is he lived longer than any of the other disciples. And so chances are when John was writing the Gospel of John, that he may just have been the last person alive that remembers witnessing Jesus, what he did and what happened, which is 
kind of crazy. So today we're going to start in John chapter 1 verse 1. And the reason we're going to start here is he doesn't really talk about what happened with Jesus at the beginning. Instead, he talks more about why it happened. So that sounds really confusing. Just wait till you hear this verse from John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. I'm going to read that one more time. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. That's kind of confusing, honestly. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, what is it trying to say? And I'm going to try to break it down for you best I can. we got to look at the time period. John was Jewish, just like Jesus. And Jews, their scriptures they had, a lot of which make up the Old Testament, they put a lot of credit in those. They studied them, like their lives revolved around studying those scriptures. And so they saw it as the word of God. But this moment's kind of a breakthrough because it's saying these words, they're not just rules and regulations. It's not just God's wisdom. God's word was God himself. It was his essence. The word reflected God. It reflected love. And so when he said the word was with God, the word was God, he's actually talking about Jesus. Jesus was the word. So that kind of gives you the outline for what's the point of the Bible. Well, the point of the Bible is to point us to Jesus, the perfect reflection of God, because he was God in human form. So we're going to try to break this down a little bit today to help us understand when we're reading the Bible, how do we see Jesus in it? How does this point us to Jesus? How can we learn from that? So we're going to be diving into some scripture from the Gospel of Mark. And here, there's the religious leaders of the time were questioning Jesus, and they tried to trap him by asking him which one of the commandments from God's commandments out of the Old Testament, which one was the greatest. They wanted to trap him because no matter what his answer was, they knew that if he gave one commandment, it would imply that the other commandments were less. So what does Jesus say? We're going to look at that in Mark chapter 12, 30 through 31. He says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This is a crazy, crazy moment. Because what Jesus has just said is love over everything else. Pretty much. Love God love everyone else and if jesus is saying that that's god's word what do we learn from that we learn that god is all about love so i'm going to ask you guys some questions and this is going to be i hope can help you study the bible a little bit more and start to learn more from it when things don't seem to make sense so the first question is what does this teach me about god what does this teach me about god and like i just said teaches us that God is all about love. God is love, right? So first question when you're reading scriptures is, what does this teach me about God? The next question we're going to ask is, what does this teach me about me, right? If God cared so much about loving other people and loving him, God clearly cares about you too. God clearly cares about loving you, and he wants you to love yourself in a healthy way. And so you can look at these scriptures and say, what does this teach me about me? How am I treating people? If I read this message from Jesus, how can I look at my life and say, this applies to me, or maybe I do that, or maybe I don't treat people that great, or maybe I don't love other people how I love myself. Maybe I elevate myself other, over, over other people, right? So what does this teach me about me? And then the third question is, what does this teach me about how I need to live or treat others? Which kind of piggybacks off the last question, what does this teach me about me? learn about you and what you do wrong normally you don't want to stop there because you end up hating yourself you don't want to do that you have to ask the next next question how do i love better how do i love god better how do i love other people better and so you ask that question when you're reading the scriptures so just like this says love your neighbor as yourself if you're not loving your neighbor as well if you don't seem to be having the impact with people that you want to have you need to say am i loving them like i love myself am i loving god that great as well and if not start making some simple changes it doesn't have to be anything ridiculous it can simply 
treat people with more respect, start saying yes ma'am, yes sir, if that's something that people around you want, start holding the door open for people, if a friend doesn't have money, pay for his lunch, simple things like that, and it can get a lot bigger. So when we ask ourselves those three questions, it completely changes how we can learn from the Bible. What does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about me? What does this teach me about how I need to live or treat others? So today I want you to just remember those three questions. Start reading the book of John. Start from chapter one where we started earlier. And just start reading it and ask yourself those three questions. You don't need to understand what every word means. That's not what it's about. It's not about knowing everything. Just start reading it and asking those questions. What does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about me? What does this teach me about how we need to live to treat other people? And remember the point of the Bible is to point us to Jesus. So those three tools are what we can use today. What does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about me? What does this teach me about how I need to live and treat other people? So that's the tool we're gonna to take today. Next week, Eric's gonna come and he's gonna bring another tool that we can use to help understand the Bible deeper and love other people better. And so I just wanna end off, again, encourage you to read John. And it's really important if you have any questions, and again, I can't stress this enough, that's amazing. Don't be afraid to ask them. Find an adult you trust, your tribe leader. That's why we have tribes. It's so you can talk to them and you can ask questions when you have questions. You don't need to feel ashamed or afraid because we all have them. And you know, if you do start reading through John and asking yourself those questions, start writing down your notes in just the notes app on your phone. And then just bring those and talk about them with your tribe leader. And I promise you, even though it might not always feel like the Bible has some sort of magic to it, the way you're going to treat other people and love other people is going to change exponentially because of it. So can't wait to continue in this series, and we'll see you guys next week.